So, hi, I'm uh, Adar Shakula. I'm a 12th grader at Egan High School. I'm also a part of the Act, the Minnesota Immigrants' Rights Action Committee. So, just for a little bit of context, I'm sure everyone already knows because they're here. Ice is like really, really bad. <laughs> so, we can see that ice is specifically bad though because it does like a lot of really bad things just recently. They smashed the windows of someone in Minneapolis in their car. We can see that ICE really doesn't have the proper oversight that it needs to have. And state and local governments can condemn ICE, but ultimately it's up to the federal government to actually make sure that ICE doesn't do anything bad, or like if it does, condemn it, which it's, you know, not doing. So more specifically in terms of education, we can see that one step that we can really take is to kind of have a safe space in our classrooms, which I as a student could, you know, greatly benefit from. And I feel like I kind of have this at Egan High School, but I'm not sure if that's there at every school. So we can kind of first off see that there is like a moral obligation in schools for schools to be a place where students can come in and learn to the best of their ability to maximize their educational potential. But we can also see that legally, from like more immigration perspective, um, organizations like ICE can't actually come into schools and hospitals they're legally not allowed to unless they either have some kind of extenuating circumstance or if the site coordinator permits them to enter. So we can really see that um, ICE is kind of harbored from doing its activities in the school as long as the school doesn't cooperate. But basically the bigger picture here is that like schools and educators have completely antithetical values to the values of ICE. And basically the US is a right now, or at least they ought to have that kind of like opposing nature. Because schools are a place where I and other students can come in and like learn, and ICE is trying to just like stop that from happening, as well as like US immigration system. But before I like leave, I do actually want to say one more thing, and that's more speaking towards my community as an Indian. Um, there's something called aging out of visas, and so essentially what that is is um, like when people want to immigrate from like India or another country to America, they come here using a visa and they get their visa either from their work or they apply for a visa to work in America. But once they get their visa and they're leaving here, they can bring their kid with them as a dependent. But basically, uh, as soon as the kid turns 21, if the kid does not get a green card or their own visa, they're actually gonna get deported. And um, recently, a lot of my friends have actually just turned 21 and they've faced this exact issue of being threatened to be de deported or deported, sorry. <laughs> and so, Basically, we can see that ICE is really stopping students from actually maximizing their educational potential. It's really terrible that, like, I could easily see myself when I'm 21 coming across the same issue, and that's, like, really scary. And ultimately, it's terrible for education across the board in the United States. So, ICE is really stopping students from, like, doing well. And it's exactly because of that we can see that, like, you know, ICE, ICE really needs to be, like, quite frankly, abolished. And <laughs> And I think that the best place to start is in the schools because like schools are one of the like main areas where immigrants can become better and like learn and ICE is trying to stop that from happening and we can't let that happen. So
and introduce yourselves and then share how are the current immigration policies affecting you, affecting your students and their families, your community, and listen to what they have to say. So we're going to take, we got our time here, we'll take about a minute and a half to go ahead and find someone and share your experiences. Go ahead. Yeah. 